Tonight's broadcast is made possible with the support of these underwriters. High school basketball fans, welcome to Sports Roundtable as we continue our discussion this season with the high school basketball coaches from across New Hanover County. I'm Joe Katz from PortCityDaily.com. Don't forget to log on to PortCityDaily.com for free online each and every day for local score stats and highlights across the Wilmington area. A big congratulations goes out to the Hoggard girls and boys basketball teams. They picked up their second straight Mid-Eastern Conference tournament titles this past Friday at Brunswick Community College, an electric environment down at P BCC, and that'll bring us to our first guest tonight, <clears throat> Head Coach Bubakar Awe, as we get ready for the first round of the state playoffs. Second round will get underway on Thursday in the 4A North Carolina High School Athletic Association tournament. Coach, heck of a run to mm -hmm. a second straight back-to-back -back tournament championships, Mid-Eastern Conference regular season title. You pick up a two-point win against Ashley in the semifinals, and then you're able to extinguish of New Hanover for the fourth time this year. A tough, time, tough thing to do when you play a team so many times to be able to come out on the right end of that deal as you did Friday night. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I'm really just uh, let me tell you that how proud I am of my girl. I thought uh, they uh, had a wonderful tournament and a wonderful season. Obviously, after ga the game on Thursday, which is too close, which, which was too close for my comfort, uh, we were able to get gather ourselves together on Friday and, and just came out with a lot of energy and, and a lot of focus so just uh, very proud of them in you know, the second time in the role that uh, you know they are conference tournament champs and, and just just uh, just a special group of girls well we've talked about it plenty of times uh, the program has come a long way under your tenure uh, now with two straight uh, league championships two straight tournament championships you're moving into the playoffs with a 19 and 3 regular season overall record you're going to get a home game at least the, for the first round against East Chapel Hill uh, but going back to the Friday night uh, tournament win over New Hanover uh, a complete effort team effort in that victory uh, led by your seniors and I know you like to highlight them uh, uh, most uh, and foremost because of the effort that they have put in throughout the last uh, four years under your direction well absolutely Joe uh we are a very unselfish team. I mean, we are at our best when we everybody contribute, and uh, I think uh, we did a good job and making that out that point across to everybody. You know, it doesn't help us just having one girl just score all the points and everybody else watching, and you want everybody on the floor to be a threat, and uh, you know, and everybody is buying into it. And like I say, the, the, my girls care about one thing, which is winning. They don't care who scores the, the basket, who does what. The, 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 their goal is just to win games, and that's why you know every. If you watch our starts, every game, we have a different leading scorer, and that's just how I want it. Well, you got back to that kind of effort after, you know, a bit of a, I don't want to call it a slump, but, uh, you know, you dropped a couple of games towards the latter part of the season. Yeah. Able to get back to that uh, well-rounded scoring effort. You've got people crashing the uh, board, the number of players coming off the bench for you uh, with big buckets in that game against New Hanover. Alani uh, Fisher uh, was hot from outside. Mm -hmm. I think she had 21 <clears throat> points in that win, followed it with a 17-point performance the day prior. So uh, right now clicking on all cylinders right where you want to be with some momentum going into the state tournament. Well, we, I, I mean, I would call it a slump because since last year I think last year in 2015 you know from January through March we only lost one game which is in the uh, uh, in the final four right. uh, so we were we weren't getting we weren't uh, getting used to losing so many games but uh, you know we we got uh, surprised by Laney at their, at their place and, and by Ashley. Also, it's also fair to point out that we were dealing with some injuries, but 
you know, when you play a team so many times in the course of the season, it's extremely, it's extremely tough to beat them every single time. I think from last year to this year, we play Ashley a total of eight times. So it's a little bit too, you know, it's a little bit too much. And we play Hannibal four times. But so keeping those the, the girls motivated is always a right. challenge. But, you know, having my two seniors, like, like I'd say, like I like to point out, uh, Aliyah and Emma, they do a pretty good job just keeping everybody grounded and, and making sure everybody, you know, they approach the game with a lot of attitude and a lot of concentration. Well, you really played with a lot of passion in that Friday night win over a new Hanover to claim again back-to-back -back, uh, Mid-Eastern Conference Tournament Champions uh, Championships. Now moving forward, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's one and done come playoff time. Uh, the second season, the postseason gets underway this week. What's it going to take for the Hoggard girls basketball team to make a similar run as they did last year? Well, you got to stick to, you know, who we are. We are a blue-collar team, man. You know, we don't have any you know, big superstar as a unit, we are definitely a force. So that's what we got to stick to. And, and we have to also stick to our bread and butter, which is, you know, defense. And, and we, we let our defense just basically start our offense. And I think every single time we've done that, we were successful. We, we definitely, we, we, we beat team. But when you come out and, and everyone is just, uh, you know, just relax and, and lackadaisical and, and just letting girls, you know, go by them, it's going to be a struggle. But, uh, but I think my girls are very hungry. They understand. They've been there before. They understand what it takes. So. You know, we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready tomorrow. Well, you got some new pieces to the puzzle this season that have been adding some huge depth to the roster, which has helped you in certain situations, especially when you had those injuries uh, throughout the midseason. Uh, moving forward as, you know, you gear up for this postseason play, uh, how has that depth uh, developed over this season where you're comfortable putting these players in tough situations, especially, you know, late in ball games? Well, it's been huge, uh, Joe. And, and, you know, it's been a long season, four months, so, you know, you're going to get some injury, like you said. But also the, the way we, the style we try to play, we need players because we want to be able to get players in and out. Like I say, right. we like to, 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 to play defense. We like to run. And it's been a blessing having, you know, those young girls, you know, I have Blair, I have Caitlin, I got Ellison Lawton and others. Uh, and also I got Alani who's transferred from Charlotte. I mean, it's, it's been a blessing and they all have adjusted quite well to our style. And it's like they've been here forever, even with, you know, how young some of their girls are. And, uh, you know, it's been a blessing. And hopefully tomorrow they, 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 they're going to be ready, understanding that the regular season of the playoffs is different, and they're going to come out with a lot of intensity and a lot of, you know. Well, we didn't you know. know how you know quite well you guys would do this season, losing your top scorer, your top rebounder from a year ago. But I think you figured things out. You're 19 and three heading into the postseason. Coach Bubakar Ah, the Hoggard girls basketball coach, back-to-back -back Eastern Conference championships. Congratulations and good luck this postseason. Thank you, Joe, and thank you for the wonderful job you do. All right, we'll take a quick break here on Sports Roundtable. We'll catch up with the other coaches from across New Hanover County as all eight of our girls and boys basketball teams have clinched a spot in the 4A state playoffs. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Roundtable. I'm Joe Katz from PortCityDaily.com. It's playoff time in high school hoops across the area, across the state. North Carolina High School Athletic Association released its brackets for the upcoming state tournaments, which will get underway this week. We'll get to second round action on Thursday. Thanks again to Coach Bubakar Aw for stopping by in our first segment. We'll talk new Hanover basketball coming up now with the head boys basketball coach of the Wildcats and Kirk Angel. And Coach, uh, you know, maybe not the way you wanted to end the Mid-Eastern Conference tournament. A tough setback to Hoggard, as we talked to in the earlier in the show with Bubakar. Tough to beat a team so many times, especially your rivals. And I think uh, that day in particular, the Vikings probably put one of their best efforts on the floor against you guys. Oh, yeah, a lot of credit to them. You know, A.J. Fry had a huge game. Bagley hit some huge shots at critical points of that game. We're trying to make a run, and he silences it. You know, a lot of credit to them. That was, it was a good game. We had our chances. Missed a lot of gimmies. You know, we missed 11 <laughs> shots two feet in, and, you know, one of my best players goes one of 10 from the free throw line. But, you know, we told the kids after the game, the previous Saturday we were a five seed. The next morning when you wake up, we're going to be a five seed. So we'll just try to put that behind us and, and look forward. And, you know, you put that behind you, uh, you know, short-term memory moving into the state playoffs, of course. Uh, one of those guys that really had a standout game for you was your senior, Akaius Fields. It seems like 
you got him the ball and you know he made things happen for you and really kept you in that ball game despite some free throw shooting woes yeah. and other things that weren't going your way that night. Uh, my, he was he was bad in the first half. He was he was shooting 14, 15 footers when we got to get paint touches. You know when when Blake's not in the game, it's not a secret. We're not a great shooting team. We have to get paint touches every time, and he did a much better job of that in the second half. All right, now when you move into the state playoffs here, uh, coming off that loss, maybe not a bad time to get one in the L column, being it that you know you lose another one here and your season's over. That yeah. you know let's get it out of the way and let's regain some momentum here, moving into the uh, state tournament, and you get a home game at least, potentially two home games uh, to start the playoffs. Uh, should you take care of business this week? Yeah, that. A part of our team, we got so much youth, they don't know. They don't know better. So after, you know, after the game, they're upset for a few minutes. And then, you know, we came in Saturday for a shoot around and they're fine. So right. we'll, uh, I think they're, they're actually looking forward to playing somebody else that's not in the <laughs> Mideastern Conference. So they're, you know, Sanderson's going to be really tough. In my opinion, they're in the best league in the East in the cap eight. And they were middle of the pack there. They got a couple of really good players. It'll be, it'll be a tough first round. When you see this 4A uh, tournament shaking out, uh, you know, you have a five seed right now, but you know, some of those teams above you, you've played them, you've played close to them. So, you know, should you look ahead to you know, where you could potentially be, uh, you should be in a good position here to be competitive. And uh, what's it going to take, I guess, to make a run here uh, to finish uh, your season on top? We, I mean, we got to defend. At times with our team, the, the lack of experience and the, the age, we've, we're not focused every possession, especially on the defensive end like I want to be. You know, we pressure the ball, but sometimes help side breaks down. we got to focus every second of every possession to try to, to win and move on. One of the things that we talk about, the youth of this team, and uh, we've talked about it before on the show, uh, was the fact that you think you're maybe a year away from being that special team, uh, similar to one that obviously went to a state title and won a state championship a couple of years back. Uh, this team here has exceeded expectations, I guess, in your mind. Yeah, if you, if you take away a Caius, I think we are a year away, I mean a year ahead. So I'm, I'm really proud of that group, the way they've come in and worked every day in practice and you know, to win 21 games at this point with that much youth, we're, we're excited. When you look at the bracket as a whole, how do you see this 4A uh, tournament kind of shaking out? I mean, you know, the 4C four, the four South Central, there we played them head to head, they're okay. Um, you know, Chris Cherry does a good job of them, but those, that top three seeds, um, Cary's obviously really good. But Millbrook and Garner are—they're deep, they're experienced, they're loaded. So, and they, you know, it, it's going to be really hard to beat one of those teams. Uh, you know, now looking back to the season that was for you, uh, you go 12 and 0. You you know, run unbeaten through the conference, uh, exactly what you've obviously set out as your goal each yeah. season. And then you get into the Mid Eastern Conference tournament. You had a little layoff there. You've had layoffs throughout the course of the season. You think that maybe played a role in you know just being a little off there on Friday night? Uh, well, I mean, Laney had a good game plan against us in the semifinals, and we came out a little eight days of rust, and you know had a much better second half against them. But, you know, I'm going to give Hoggard a ton of credit Friday night. They had a great game plan. Their, their seniors really stepped up right. in a championship game and made some really key plays, Xavier Johnson, A.J. Fry. Walker Bateman, I can't say enough about how much he's improved. You know, he, he, was, he was breaking pressure, and it's like nine and a half seconds before he gets it over the timeline. But he got it over every time against Freddie, who can really guard the ball. But I'll give them a lot of credit as well on bigger. Yeah. Freddie Taylor, one of these guys uh, at your point guard position, uh, you know, really quick, and I like the way he plays defense, man. Ball on ball defense. I mean, he's a pretty special kid, only a sophomore. He sits in a stance for 32 minutes. Uh, he's exhausted after every game. When I'm doing laundry at the end, I can wring his jersey out with sweat and blood and everything else. He sets the tone for us defensively, and he's he's really come a long way maturity-wise and in the classroom as well as on the court. New Hanover Boys basketball coach Kirk Angel here with us on Sports Roundtable as we wrap up uh, this discussion uh, tonight. You know, what's it going to take here as we push forward with these two home, potential home games at Brogdon Hall? Always a tough place to play when people are coming from out of town, yeah. experiencing their first time on the floor at Brogdon. Well, and that's the thing with Sanderson. They're going to walk in Brogdon and say, this is Brogdon. So I don't think they're going to be in any kind of shock at all. they got a senior-laden team. That they're well coached. They're, they're going to come in and want to get to a second round. Yeah, we got to defend, and we're not big. We have to. We got to box out and try to run and push pace and, and get people playing at the tempo we want to play. New Hanover Boys basketball coach Kirk Angel, coach. Hopefully, we will be talking to you next week on the show. Appreciate it. All right, the Wildcats, 20 and two. They earn a five seed in the upcoming 4A state playoffs. A couple of home games ahead for New Hanover. Should they be able to take care of business here in this first round? We'll take a break. Thanks again to Coach Angel. We'll catch up with the other coaches from across New Hanover County right after this break. Yeah, that's the rule. Hey, to be, be cool. cool about fire safety. 
most important thing for you and your parents is to have an escape plan. Have two ways out of your room or house in case one is blocked by fire. Have a meeting place outside of your house so everyone knows that no one is inside. Practice the plan because just having a plan is no good if you don't practice it. Gotta be cool. It's never too early to start reading to your kids. Are you prepared for what awaits you? There are amazing possibilities when you open a child's mind to reading. Log on to the Library of Congress website and let the journey begin. Welcome back to Sports Roundtable. I'm Joe Katz from PortCityDaily.com. We're talking high school basketball playoff edition of the show tonight as... Uh, all eight of our basketball teams, boys and girls from New Hanover, Laney, Hoggard, and Ashley, clinched a spot in the 4A state playoffs. Joining us now is the head Ashley boys basketball coach in his second year, Webb Guthrie. And coach, a little bit of a tall task for you heading into this first round of the uh, state playoffs, going up against unbeaten Garner. Uh, but looking back onto the season, uh, how do you kind of grade yourself as you reflect on your second year at the helm of the Screaming Eagles? Uh, Joe, uh, a lot of positives to take away. Really proud of our guys. It's uh, nice to make playoffs second year in a row here. <laughs> uh, didn't have the finish I think we would have liked to this season. Uh, started out real strong and had some games I thought we could have played better in. But uh, our junior group's been exciting to watch. I thought they've grown a lot. and. Uh, our chemistry has been great all year. These guys like being around each other, which is it's just good to be around this group. So. Uh, you know, you talk about your junior class. Eventually, uh, obviously, you'll have them back for another season. Uh, how do you think uh, your team has developed maybe going from year one to year two? And then when you look ahead to kind of year three, what Ashley basketball can be all about? Yeah, this junior group last uh, six, seven games, Joe, has really been exciting for us just seeing them gel together on the floor. Uh, we got a few kids that didn't play a lot earlier in the year, but back half of conference really have, have played some more minutes for us and uh, came up big in some key stretches. So it's good to see them kind of gelling together and knowing that's the group going into the third year next year. It's, uh, it's going to be positive for us. Uh, when you look at you, you know, your draw here in the uh, 4A bracket, obviously going up against a Garner team uh, for the second straight year, uh, and you, you know, we were just talking a moment ago, you think this team is better than what they were from last year. Yeah, uh, I mean, what can you say about Garner? <laughs> I watched some film this morning. They are extremely athletic. Uh, point guard in Thomas Allen, who might be one of the best across the state. I think he put up 35 in a championship game against Clayton. Uh, you know, re really good at all positions, more athletic than us at all positions. I think with our guys, we go to practice and have a hard practice and just preach competing and just play the best we can, and uh, you know we'll see what we can do. Yeah, I guess that's kind of the message. Obviously, you have a nice long bus ride to get up there uh, to Garner, and then uh, you know they know they look at the schedule, they look at the the numbers, your players. Uh, so that's kind of the message: is let's just you know put it all out on the floor and let's see how it falls. Yeah, I think the positive for us, you know, that's who we played last year, first round as well. So I, th I think we know their style very well. A lot of our kids were in that game, our seniors, so they kind of know what to expect going in. A few kids they played against last year, so. Uh, you know, like I said, we just want our guys to go up there, compete, finish the year strong on a good message, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, it could potentially be the last couple of games for uh, those seniors that will be graduating, <laughs> Ryan Keller being one of them. Uh, you know, as they, you know, transition into potentially another sport in the spring, as they see their high school career kind of come to a close, what's the message that you give to them uh, as they, you know, watch their high school days uh, dwindle? Yeah, Joe, I can't say enough about, you know, Ryan Keller, Quadafi Turner, Josh Smiley, uh, Jacob Graves, some of our senior group, DC Russ, kids have really been invested in the last two years with us coming in and really just done everything we asked them to do, worked hard, got better at a lot of things and just, just embody everything we want kids coming in this program to do. You so. know, how have you helped uh, kind of shape where you want this program to go over the last couple of seasons? I know you do a lot of uh, work in the off season in the community. You're at the Boys and Girls Club. You had uh, a couple former players come back, uh, even from Hoggard that come, came back last <laughs> year to speak with uh, the Boys and Girls Club. So you're doing some things outside of basketball that are helping shape these young men. Yeah, the group I just mentioned uh, really helped us with that. You know, we want these young men to play hard and compete on the floor obviously but it, it was more than that you know we want our kids to come through our program give back to this community and really rep this whole port city and basketball and things we can do to help the next generation coming through you know I tell our guys these middle school elementary kids they are watching y'all every night they watch your actions more than your words and, and to get out in the community and really give back in a way 
um, always special and it's something we always want our kids to, uh, to get out and do. Well, I mean, it starts at the top with yourself. Uh, you know, you've given back to this country, obviously, this community. Uh, you're now back at your alma mater. So uh, I guess it's a good place to start at the top with yourself and then it kind of trickles down to your players and hopefully, uh, you know, we turn these uh, you know, losses into wins moving forward, but as well as, you know, making sure they're good citizens and stewards of the community. Yeah, we hope so. It's kind of like I told you, Joe, last time, you know, we're, we're a long ways from where we come, but we're still not satisfied. You know, we've had two years, 11 wins, which has been consistent. We'd like to keep Ashley on that consistent basis, but uh, we're always hungry for more. Well, when you look at the, uh, the history of the Ashley uh, basketball program, you know, you've had some ups and downs, obviously, throughout the course of uh, the, you know, the recent history of this school. Uh, you are the first graduating class to go through that. So how have you seen just the school and maybe the program change uh, throughout the course of the last, you know, 15 years? Uh, great question. You know, I laugh with you. When I started our first year, we were just a junior group, and, and Joe, for lack of a better word, we were terrible. <laughs> We were terrible. We played hard, but we didn't have a lot of athletes. We had two kids that came up from Hoggard and really kind of carried our program. Um, I think just what I said, I want to see this program go and be consistent as it can be um, with the mindset that we can compete with anybody on any night if we play with a level of toughness and execute our style of basketball. We really believe that. And uh, it's good to see, especially that junior group and senior group we have now, some kids buying into that. Right. Just to know that when you play us every night, you're going to get a tough game and we're going to compete. Well, I think you're doing a great job so far. Obviously, those, uh, you know, the setbacks will start turning into wins for you. But just keep, keep on the grind. And I think uh, you know, you're positioned right now uh, to keep this Ashley basketball program towards the top and eventually uh, you know, exceeding some expectations moving forward. Well, we hope so. I really appreciate that. As job. Ashley boys basketball coach Webb Guthrie, <coughs> the Screaming Eagles will head up to Garner, take on unbeaten Garner in the first round of the state playoffs this week. Thanks again to Coach for stopping by all season here on Sports Roundtable. We'll take another quick break. We'll catch up with the other coaches from across New Hanover County right after this. We're talking playoffs here in high school basketball. Yes, Coach Nathan Falk, playoffs. We're talking <laughs> in high school hoops across New Hanover County, across the state of North Carolina as we gear up for the first and second rounds of the state tournament this week. All eight of our uh, boys and girls basketball programs from across New Hanover County clinched a spot in the 4A tournament. We appreciate the other coaches for stopping by earlier in the show. Up next is the head coach of the Laney Buccaneers, and that's Nathan Falk. And Coach, uh, you finished the year 11-11, and -11, as your uh, record says overall, going into a tough game against South Central, uh, a team that is familiar with uh, at least one of our uh, in-town schools in New Hanover. They played them uh, during the MLK holiday earlier uh, this year. But as we look back into the season that was uh, for you and your program as you're moving forward and continuing to try to shape the Laney basketball uh, program, how, you know, how did things shake out for you this season in your eyes? Positive. We're, we're okay. We, we, uh, we feel good about <clears throat> some things. Uh, we had some injuries, you know, not having you know, Tyler French, a majority of the season and Marquand early uh, definitely hurt us. Uh, we lost some close games, but uh, to be to have 12 wins this year and be in the playoffs and talking about playoffs, uh, we're certainly we're certainly happy about that. Uh, you know, going up against a tough uh, South Central team, uh, a team as I mentioned uh, played New Hanover uh, down to the wire last uh, earlier this season. Uh, what have you seen kind of in your scouting report of them uh, that you think you can uh, expose uh, coming into this first round of the state tournament? Well, they're a lot like New Hanover, you know, with uh, with athletes and trapping and pressing and um, wanting to speed you up and a really good point guard. Um, so we're just going to have to attack it like we were playing New Hanover uh, again. You know, Coach, as you move through this season, uh, you know, been to many of your games, uh, you know, your game plan obviously changes with each and every team that you face. Uh, how does, you know, take, take us through the ins and outs of a, a scouting report uh, leading up to a game day. Yeah, well, you have to be flexible and you have to um, to adapt and, and be ready to, to change and come up with a plan depending on who you're playing. And um, with us, like I said, this game's going to be, we're going to attack it much like we would a New Hanover game. Um, you know, it's on the road that makes it, you know, obviously tough as well. But uh, but I think playing the New Hanovers like we have and even playing Cary, we played Cary in the, in the Brogdon, prepares us for, for that type of game and that's why we'll be looking back home. You know, some of the guys on your team, uh, we've showcased them throughout the course of uh, this season, but we'll get to highlight them here at least one more time uh, this year. And I think it starts, uh, you know, with one of your younger guys and Chris Bennett. And this is a guy that uh, really, <laughs> he's not afraid to mix it up uh, with anybody. Uh, you know, and that's somebody that you're going to be welcome back with open arms uh, come next season. Yeah, he's the heart and soul of who we are in our DNA. and. He'll be a thousand point scorer for us, you know, by the time he's, he's said and done. And um, Sherrod's been, Sid Berry, our freshman, has been a great, you know, uh, addition. Uh, we bring Hunter Cook, who's played three years of varsity basketball, back next year as well. And we surround ourselves with, um, with some talent from the JV team and a lot of guys in the locker room coming back, period. So. 
Well, how do you ch you know how how do you challenge some of these younger guys to you know really step up, especially as they gain some experience at the varsity level, moving through the course of a season, they maybe get some more minutes towards the end of a year, uh, and then moving into that next season through the off season. You know, how do you challenge these guys to take that next step to be a leader on your, uh, your team? Well, that'll start immediately when we're done playing in the playoffs. I mean, someone has to step up, and then next man up, next group up, and and then it starts really in our spring workouts, and and, and in the summer it goes into the summer and. Um, I, I'm glad that they're with this ride with us right now and experiencing the playoffs is easier because we've had a three-year absence. So um, for us, it's, it's very good to be in the playoffs and have them experience this. Uh, now for yourself, uh, it doesn't seem to ever stop for you when, it's, uh, when we're talking about coaching basketball. You do uh, work on the outside of Laney High School as well. Uh, so how do you get your guys to uh, buy into what you're doing during the offseason uh, leading up to school ball come next year? I mean, it's just daily interactions with them, you know, daily motivating them. Um, our, you know, we, we, we work as hard as anybody with what we're doing in the spring and summer with our workouts and just, you know, letting them understand that, hey, we've made this progression this year. Let's take it up a notch next year. Uh, you know, we talk about some of that outside stuff that you're doing. Uh, why don't you, you know, let the uh, listeners and viewers know, you know, some of the things that you do on the off season. It's not just a, uh, you know, a three month job, a four month no, job. That'd be it's, easy. It's a 24 seven, 365 type of thing, especially with the uh, tournaments that you host over uh, inside Michael Jordan Gymnasium. It seems like it is a consistent thing all year around. Yeah, we, we definitely have basketball going 12 months out of year over at Laney. Um, it is something we take pride in. We'll start with the Fred Lynch invitation, always a big, you know, big tournament every year. We have 60, 70, I think this year probably up to 100 teams that come in. Um, so we take work and begin work with that immediately. Um, and then we, we start in the spring, do our workouts in the spring, do our workouts in the summer, month of June. We probably play 30, 35 games in June. So it's just nonstop. Uh, you know, and I, we talk a lot about uh, with the other coaches about, you know, getting uh, basketball only type of players uh, in their programs and, you know, having to juggle that with other sports. Uh, you know, how does your team shape up and mold to that type of uh, recipe there? Well, we, we, I, I want multiple athletes. I, I don't mind that at all. I, I like that. I encourage that. Um, you know, Sherrod Sidbury, you know, Tariq Lane, we've had a host of guys in, in the past that's played, you know, football, basketball, and a variety of different sports. So. Uh, competition breeds competition, and, and, and that, that's a good thing for us. Well, 12 wins uh, this year, uh, you know, one game over 500 for yourself, and uh, your first playoff appearance in a couple of seasons as well. So, uh, has Laney basketball, you have Laney basketball, kind of on the right path here, the, the setting stones here to, uh, you know, move forward and make a successful run here in the years to come. Yeah, we're, we're, we're back. We took a little slump there for a minute, but, I, but we, we're progressing, and I see it as visual, and, and they're starting to see it now in visual, and the playoffs is just, you know, it's like the reward, they're, that's something they can physically see, so that, that's going to help us. He's the head coach of the Laney Buccaneers, Nathan Falk, and coach, I appreciate you spending some time with me this season. Good luck here in the playoff matchup, and we hope to be talking to you again soon. Thank you. That's the head coach of the Laney Buccaneers, Nathan Falk. The Bucs making their first playoff appearance in a couple of seasons. They're going to head up to uh, South Central in the first round of the state tournament, which gets underway this week. We'll take another break here on Sports Roundtable. We're talking with the high school basketball coaches from across New Hanover County tonight. I'm Joe Katz from PortCityDaily.com, and we'll be right back. King. Go fish. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Let's turn over this log. Yeah. Whoa. I like the big black ones. I like the brown wiggly ones. Mm, I like the green, crunchy ones myself. Whoa. Get out and explore nature. There's surprises everywhere. Go to discovertheforest.org. <clears throat> Anyone up for dessert? We're talking high school basketball tonight on Sports Roundtable, the playoff edition of the show. I'm Joe Katz from PortCityDaily.com. Appreciate Coach Nathan Falk of the Laney Buccaneers stopping by. Last segment, we'll keep it in Bucktown with the head coach of the Lady Bucks and Sherry Tynes and Coach uh, moving forward. Before we get to, I guess, the playoff uh, picture and how that's going to all shake out against a familiar foe in uh, this week's first round. Last week, we were down at Brunswick Community College and had a chance to catch up with one of your former players, and uh, Brianna Bayham, and she is eighth right now. 
now in the uh, National Junior College Athletic Association Division II uh, in, in points per game right now. So mm -hmm. she's having a heck of a year as a sophomore, going to go play uh, her, the remaining days of her college uh, playing days at UNC Pembroke next season. So mm -hmm. she's having a heck of a year. She's having a great year. You know, she went over there, she worked hard, she worked on her game, she improved in several areas, and it's just she's just really – you know, taking advantage of that situation and it's just really blossomed and, and having, like you say, a great year and um, just a huge asset for them. And, you know, it, it paid off in that she's got two more years of ball to play at Pembroke and just, you know, looking forward to seeing her, seeing her there. Uh, you see, you know, so many times players go to maybe a school that is maybe out of their reach in their early college playing days and then they get discouraged by not getting enough time or not uh, contributing enough to the team. Uh, when you get to that JUCO level, you have a chance to contribute right away, and Brianna's mm -hmm. done that, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that help maybe shape a player that, you know, potentially uh, didn't get, got maybe overlooked in her high school recruiting, or uh, just, uh, you know, that was just the be best fit for Yeah, and player. it was a good fit for her. You know, Bibi's personality was always kind of a quiet player, so she never really stuck out um, out there on the court, even though we knew what she was capable of, and we knew she was capable of scoring. Um, her, She's a very unselfish player, whereas at times she needed to be a little more selfish in a good way. And, um, you know, she went down there and, and just, you know, she's not overly, you know, size-wise. She's, she's a shorter player, and I think some people were kind of worried with that, along with her, you know, being so quiet. But, you know, she went down there, and she's carried a load, and, you know, she's a good defender, and, um, you know, can score some points. We knew she could score points. You know, yeah. it was just a matter of her stepping up and, and having the confidence and, and knowing it's okay, you know, to be the one <laughs> to, to shoulder that responsibility. And I think she's averaging something like 21.8 mm -hmm. points per game this season. Mm -hmm. Again, ranked eighth in the National Junior yeah. College Athletic Association Division II uh, points per game. So congratulations yeah. to Brianna on what she's doing. Moving ahead to what you're doing this week, uh, you tough, you know, there's been many years where you've had to travel uh, two and a half, uh, three hours for your first round home game. That's not the case come uh, <laughs> opening round of the state playoffs uh, this week. No, it's not. <laughs> we are, we're going to save some money in the travel budget and uh, go over to Market Street one more time and, and see how it shakes out. Well, uh, you know, against the New Hanover Wildcats, of course, uh, a team very familiar with, obviously, this season, many seasons in years past. Uh, mm -hmm. Haven't been able to uh, get over the uh, hump this year yet, uh, but well, like we just mentioned, you got one more try. Go so uh, how do you, you know, how do you get the uh, girls ready to play come, I guess you don't have to say much to them, but uh, from a game plan standpoint, how do you approach a game like this? Well, it's another opportunity. And, um, you know, obviously they've had our number four times already this year, but, um, you know, it's maybe the fifth time will be a charm. You don't know. You just got to hope they show up ready to play. We, we know what we need to, to try to do better at against them. Um, we're given that opportunity one more time, and, um, you know, you play the game. When you move, uh, when you look ahead to, you know, seasons to go in the future here, uh, you're going to lose a couple of players moving into next season, a couple of key contributors, obviously, to your team uh, this year. Uh, but it looks like you have a bright future ahead for yourself. Uh, if you can get some players healthy, obviously one of those players being uh, Jensen Edwards, uh, a young player that, you know, suffered a season-ending injury before the season even began for you. Mm -hmm. How's her uh, injury progressing, and, uh, you know, what should we see from her? I know yeah, she's a she, soccer yeah, player she, she's that. doing well. She, um, she'll be back for the summer season for summer ball and AAU ball, so she's looking forward to that. We're looking forward to seeing her back in action as well. Um, you know, and, and certainly, you know, it was a huge loss for us, and it will be a huge asset for us when she gets back healthy. Um, and we've got, you know, we've got a lot of sophomores coming back. Um, we've got some good young players coming over from the middle school. So, I mean, you know, we've, the, the future is bright. The kids work hard, and um, you know, everybody stays healthy, then, you know, we'll, we'll be good to go. I know, uh, you know, Mid-Eastern Conference, you have the four schools here in Wilmington, but looking across the rest of the Eastern bracket of the 4A playoffs, uh, you got any inside information on some of the teams that we can maybe look out for and uh, how we might match up? You know, the Laney's, the New Hanover's, the Hoggards. Uh, well, you, you got the kid, the guys over in Raleigh, you know, they've got some really strong teams over there with Millbrook, Southeast Raleigh, um, and, and always tough to go through, and you, and you really hope not to have to see those guys until at least the third round. Um, you know, with our bracket, unfortunately, it hasn't shaped up that way. I'm not sure how that, that happened, but, um, <laughs> you know, you'd like to think you wouldn't see those guys till the third round, but... Um, you know, it's, 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 it's what it is. You just, you know, one game at a time and do the best you can. As you look back onto this season, you know, how do, how do you think things uh, panned out considering some of the circumstances that you guys have had to face the challenges? Oh, wow. Had? Gosh, you know, if you, you know, look back at Christmas time, you know, we were, we were headed south pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And um, we were able to right the ship and the, the kids just, you know, kept working hard. And that was, you know, all that we could do was to preach that. And, 
you know, having to, to adjust some of the responsibilities and roles of some of the kids, you know, that, that took a while to happen. And, um, you know, Bailey Edwards stepped up for us big time this year on both ends of the floor and just carried us. And, um, it, you know, and then, 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 you know, the other seniors, Jada, um, you know, Kirsty, and, um, you know, those guys, Anna Ray, I mean, everybody, you know, contributed a little bit here and there, and it just, you know, made a big difference. And, you know, a lot of kids got playing time that perhaps they may not have seen in, in another cir circumstances, so we're hoping that will carry over to next year and, you know, give, us, give them a little head start with what we're trying to do, so. Gaining some valuable experience, Absolutely. obviously, the younger players moving forward. Uh, your seniors have done a great job this season. Coach Sherry Times and the Lady, Lady Bucks uh, exceeding expectations this year and hopefully, uh, you know, raising maybe a conference banner here in the next couple of seasons. Hope so. It's Coach Sherry Tynes here on Sports Roundtable. We appreciate uh, her co joining us uh, each and every week this season. We'll take another break here on Sports Roundtable as we continue our playoff edition of the show tonight. We'll take a break and we'll be joined by the rest of the other coaches right after this. High school basketball fans, welcome back to Sports Roundtable. I'm Joe Katz from PortCityDaily.com. Local scores, stats, and highlights the upcoming Brackets for the state playoffs online for free at PortCityDaily.com. Thanks again to Coach Times for stopping by from Laney. Now we're going to go over to New Hanover and Vertha Dixon Wright, the head coach of the uh, Wildcats and the girls basketball team, coming off a tough setback in the Mid-Eastern Conference Tournament Finals. Uh, you get to face another in-town foe uh, come again in the opening round of the state tournament. Share some thoughts on uh, how you feel about that. Uh, I have very little <laughs> thoughts on that. And probably shouldn't share what I feel right now. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. Having to play somebody four, five times in the same season is crazy. My only question is, what is the seating committee looking at? But it is what it is, and uh, we're lucky enough to be at home. I don't think we're going to have to tell the kids too much to get them excited, you know, cross town rival. So. We'll be ready to play tomorrow, hopefully. Um, you know, a game that you uh, were, I don't want to say not ready to play, it was Friday night against Mid-Eastern Conference rival uh, Hoggard, a, a team that's kind of had your number over the last uh, <laughs> number of seasons. Uh, but with that said, uh, you put in a good effort there uh, through, you know, portions of that ball game. Uh, what's it going to take here, uh, you know, as you move into the state playoffs to kind of forget about that setback and uh, get back to some winning ways and gain some momentum here? potentially with a couple of wins in this tournament? The problem we have when we come up against Hargard, they know who our scores are. And it is their top effort to do everything they can to deny them the ball and when they have the ball to put pressure defense on them. We, the Lady Wildcats, need to learn how to find somebody else to score. If we cannot get Ayana to score, it's time for the Michelles to step up. It's time for the essence. Other people have to take roles in order for us to move forward. It's just that simple. Um, with that said, you've had throughout portions of the season, you've had some of those players step up and fill yes. up the scoring column uh, for you. Yeah. Uh, but while I'm saying that, they are still you know, sophomores, a lot of young players on the team. And I know that's an excuse that goes weary with you <laughs> after a while as you especially move into a, a postseason tournament. Right. Uh, but with that said, you got to think that there's at least hope and uh, you know, that they're going to build some confidence over the uh, next number of seasons and as they gain value valuable minutes at the varsity level that they'll finally, you know, something will click in them and then they'll learn to uh, take over games when they need to. I, I hope that is the case. Um, they're so used to those two, three kids stepping up that when they don't do well, they don't think they're supposed to and this is when we need them the most. Um, they played a lot of valuable minutes. We, we play eight, nine, sometimes ten girls a night. And so the minutes are coming easy. It doesn't matter whether we're up or down. We're, we're putting them in. We're shuffling them in and shuffling them out. So when we look at them on a night like Friday night, they kind of lead us a little bit. They're kind of hiding around the corner, so to speak. They're still not ready to step up. And I'm not sure exactly what it's going to take, but um, they'll get better. I know they will. Well, you've got, uh, you know, like I said, ha you know, all of your team pretty much uh, coming back. No seniors. Right? No, no seniors. Team. So that, no that seniors. is a definitely a positive note that yeah. uh, the chemistry on this team is, should be rich, uh, you know, this oh, year yeah. and then developing as you head through the off season, moving into the uh, yeah. you know, new season here next year. Oh, yeah. It's a good group of kids. They, they play well together. They talk to each, each other. They encourage each other. You can look at the stats. They don't really care who's the leader or who did what this game. They're just, they want to win. And, you know, Friday night hurt them. You know, they, they didn't do some of the things they know they needed to do, not taking anything away from Hoggart, but they didn't. And the locker room was real quiet when I walked in there, and that's kind of unusual. Win or lose, there's normally some noise in there, but there wasn't any noise Friday night. 
And so the first thing I tried to reassure them was that it wasn't the end. You know, you don't have to be quiet. You don't have to have the sad face. You know, we, we, we still have new life. We're moving on. And so uh, it was quite shocking Friday to walk in there to see them that quiet. But like I said, with the young kids, they, they still just don't know, you know. And, uh, but it's a good group of kids, like I said, and they are learning to play well together. And, and uh, we'll, we'll just see how far it takes us. Well, uh, you know, I guess a short-term memory is probably a good a couple of words yeah. to use for you. Uh, how do you recapture some of that momentum that you've had throughout the course of the season and, you know, use that to propel yourself here through mm -hmm. the uh, state tournament with maybe a couple of wins? Yeah, well, well, we started it off Saturday morning. We had Saturday morning practice from 8 to 10. Of course, I left them a little early. But, you know, I didn't want them to sit the whole weekend and dwell on this. We lost, we lost, blah, blah, blah. So I brought them back in. They were all there on time, early, you know, um, working hard, worked hard when I left. And so we just, we just keep moving on. And that's what I try to emphasize to them. We just keep moving on and uh, keep going as far as we can go. And then when we can't go anymore, we'll stop, sit down, figure out what happened and what can we do to make it better. Go up against a team uh, again like Laney, uh, yeah. a team that, you know very familiar with what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, can similarly take away you know some of those scores oh, yeah. that you have. How do yeah. you you know how do you prepare for a team that you've seen five times or you know there's no new tricks and there's no new rabbits that you're gonna be able to pull out of the hat. It's no. gonna be you know whoever yeah. performs the best is gonna win that game. And and, and that's that's about right. Like Coach Tyne says, you know we pretty much know what they're doing. They know what we're doing, and it's basically up to the kids at this point. We're gonna tell them to run this and to run that and how well they do it or, you know, if they don't do it well, then it's, it's almost up to them, you know. It's, it's nothing new at this, at this time. We don't have three days to implement new offenses or, we, you know, we can always switch up defenses, but which ones are going to work at this stage is basically up to the kids. Well, the New Hampshire Wildcats uh, finished uh, second in the Mid-Eastern Conference Tournament. 17-5, and five, your playoff record heading into the 4 A Tournament. Uh, number 15 seed, you get number 18, Laney, uh, here in the first round. Coach Vertha Dixon Wright of the New Hampshire Wildcats. Appreciate you stopping by all season. We'll talk Thank to you, you hopefully Jeff. next week yeah. to wrap up, uh, you know, hopefully what will be a good week for you at playoff basketball. I hope so, too. Thank all you. Right, that's the head coach of the New Hampshire Wildcats, Vertha Dixon Wright, continuing our conversation tonight with the high school basketball coaches from across New Hanover County. Another quick break. We'll catch up with Ashley girls coach Adrian Gale after this. many fun things we all can do to be healthier, no matter who you are or where you are. So let's move. Well, here we go. Let's stretch in the grass. What a play. Let's play tag. Wow, unbelievable. Let's jump up and down. Oh, -ho! what a way to finish it. And most of all, let's eat better so that we have the energy we need to play an hour a day every day. Everyone can play. Just go to letsmove.gov to learn more. Six coaches down, two to go here on Sports Roundtable. We're talking high school basketball playoff edition of the show tonight. I'm Joe Katz from PortCityDaily.com. Next up, uh, here in the lounge, I guess you can call it. What a lounge that we have here. Adrian Gale of the <laughs> Ashley Screaming Eagles. Coach, you uh, get into the playoffs, so you have to go up to Southeast Raleigh, take on a team that has 21 wins this season. So a tough, uh, you know, call here, a tough task ahead for uh, your team as you get ready for this playoff appearance. Yeah, well, I mean, we... We're happy to be in. Uh, we knew that if we got in, and when we did, that it wasn't going to be a, you know, an easy game. We we understand that it's going to be tough. Um, all the Raleigh schools are tough. Um, you know, if you look at it, it's probably a little bit better than you know we didn't get Millbrook or Durham Hillside. So we have to look at the positives, and you know, um, we're playing our best basketball right now. So we're just looking to go out there and compete. Put in a pretty good effort uh, in the Mid-Eastern Conference Tournament. Uh, mm -hmm. Game came down to the wire against Hoggard. Obviously, things don't go your way with a whistle uh, late, turning into some free throws, which uh, you know ultimately was the uh, difference in that game, a two-point setback to uh, the Vikings, the eventual Mid-Eastern Conference Tournament champs. Uh, but with that said, when you're you know playing these in-town teams, obviously you get a lot of uh, you know back and forth uh, with the players, and you know that game was uh, you know a tough test uh, test to the kind of the might that your team has and uh, an attitude. Uh, uh, you know, you had t 
you talked about earlier this year, maybe the team, I don't want to call them too soft, but uh, players that, you know, maybe need to impose their will a bit more. When you get punched in the mouth, when you get shoved around a little bit, uh, that, you know, asks you a question, you know, are you gonna, how do you respond to that? How do you think they responded? I think they responded great. I couldn't ask anything else from them, um, you know, besides just things turning out a little bit different. Um, you know, they fought hard, they played hard, um, you know, th they've improved so much from the beginning of the year till now. They're playing their best basketball. They're, like you said, they're getting tougher uh, mentally. Um, that's been a challenge physically. Uh, leadership has developed in, in so many players too. I mean, I can't ask for uh, more than what they're they're doing right now. Like some of the other teams here in the conference, uh, you have a lot of youth on that team. So mm -hmm. uh, getting these valuable experiences here, going into you know the Mid Eastern Conference tournament, uh, you know playing a physical style of basketball, getting pushed around, shoved around. This is all going to benefit you. Maybe not tomorrow against Southeast Raleigh, but you know moving forward as you as they continue to develop as basketball players, uh, that you know these experiences uh, should help them you know win those types of games uh, in the future instead of uh, you know with a tough setback last week oh yeah I mean you know the, it's 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 hard to get pushed that much and then you know keep your cool and I think my girls did a good job with that and um, you know it's it's good to the prepare for um, physical teams um, that you will see you know next year um, especially some of those young ones they haven't really been out there and, and grinding right. that much like they did this year and then also to prepare you for bigger stronger teams that you see you know, in the playoffs, whether it's, you know, this year or in the future. So, you know, hopefully they can, um, you know, remember um, how to, you know, to play through things and be tough. Um, and not back down, and that's what I want to see uh, tomorrow night. Well, we talked about some of those highs and lows throughout the course of the season that you've had. Uh, some highs followed by some uh, really low lows you mentioned. Uh, you know, as you go into this uh, postseason tournament here, uh, you say you're playing some of your best basketball right now, so trying to keep some momentum up and just keep a positive attitude here on a pretty lengthy bus ride for you. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, that's how we're going to look at it. And that's kind of what I said to him Friday uh, after the game. And, you know, what we're going to kind of focus on today at practice, too, is just, you know, we are. We are playing. I mean, I would think for the past two weeks, ever since that Topsail loss, um, when we went real low, uh, we've been playing well. You know, for the majority of the games, there's been a couple of times where it's, you know, periods it went down a little bit, but not like it has earlier and not like it was doing earlier in the season. So, we're definitely playing more sound basketball, and uh, we're going to look and find every positive that we can and hold on to that momentum and and just grind it out tomorrow. Uh, you know, playmakers make plays in big games, and I think your playmakers really last week in that conference tournament made some big plays to uh, you know keep you alive and in ball games, uh, especially you know late in ball games too. Yeah, uh, Dana Craig, I'm just so impressed with her right now. She has been, you know getting some double doubles the last couple of weeks and just going to and attacking the basket so much stronger looking to shoot more you know in the beginning of the year she was just looking to pass in the paint you know and, and uh, what we're getting out of her right now is is unbelievable i couldn't ask anything more so for just for her to do it and right. roll into next year with it and be a leader as a senior yeah, you're going to have, uh, you know, most of your roster back next season. So you got to think that, you know, whether things work out uh, this year or not in the state playoffs, that, you know, there's a lot of uh, confidence, a lot of hope that next year uh, we're going to be in position here to make a run at a conference title. Yeah, I'd hope so. You know, you never know what's going to happen um, year to year. Um, so, <laughs> you know, so we'll, we'll take it and, and see how we do. I mean, it, it should be kind of, you know, if when the end is here, uh, know that, you know, we'll miss our seniors, but hopefully the young ones will see opportunities in the future. Coach Adrian Gale, the Ashley girls basketball team, we've been catching up all season long. We'll continue to do so uh, should you stay in the state tournament. So I appreciate you stopping by and uh, look forward to watching the results this week. Thank you. He's the head coach. She's the head coach of the <laughs> Ashley Screaming Eagles. Uh, they will head up to Southeast Raleigh in the first round of the state tournament this week. Round two gets underway on Thursday. I'm Joe Katz here on Sports Roundtable. We'll catch up with our final guest tonight right after this quick break. He's the head coach of the Hoggard boys basketball team, Brett Queen. That's coming up after this quick timeout.
Well, we started the show with the Mid-Eastern Conference champion. We will finish the show with the Mid-Eastern Conference champion. I'm Joe Katz from PortCityDaily.com. Joining us for our last segment this evening is the head coach of the Hoggard Boys basketball team, Brett Queen. And Coach Queen, heck of an effort for your boys back on Friday night. Uh, you finally get over the hump and uh, take down New Hanover the third time you face him this season. And a heck of a ball game. Uh, you pick up the win, a closely played contest. Uh, the previous games came down to the wire. This time, you're able to do just enough to uh, pick up the win. Well, it was a great night for our guys. Uh, I, you know, I really enjoyed watching them play, and that's what a lot of that was, was just watching them make plays. And, um, you know, all three games that we played with them this year came down to, you know, down at the end of the game with one team down by three, attempting a three to tie the game up. And uh, the results all three times were missed three-pointers. So, uh, fortunately for us, this time we were, uh, we were the team with the lead. But uh, just really proud of the way our guys played. Um, yeah, I thought we, we did a great job, especially in the first half. Uh, and then we just had to weather some uh, – game got a little more physical in the second half. And fortunately, we had a, 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 had a cushion to be able to overcome that. And, um, you know, our, our, our big guys inside, A.J. Fry and Xavier Johnson, had a great game. And Jack Bagley hit three huge threes for us. Um, you know, one – he hit back-to-back -back threes right mm -hmm. after we had lost the lead for the only time that, that we didn't lead in the second half and then uh, hit one with about a minute left that, that gave us a six-point lead. So uh, just really happy for our seniors. Um, you know, those guys have, have put in a championship effort, uh, <clears throat> you know, on and off the court, uh, off season, during the season. And, and it was just really, really happy for them to – to get rewarded with that win. Yeah, absolutely. Good to see those efforts pay off uh, in a championship game. I uh, came down to the last uh, few possessions, and this time you you know, you know pu pulled it out on top. Uh, you talked about those guys that kind of uh, filled up the scoring column for you, and Jack, AJ, uh, and Xavier. But I think one of the key guys in that game was your point guard, Walker Bateman, uh, continues obviously to improve in that position, has jumped leaps and bounds this year, uh, limited his turnovers against a, you know, a pressure defense that New Hanover likes to play, uh, particularly at that point guard position. Their point guard is going to you know, press your guy a ton and he was able to uh, you know weather that storm and he played a key role in that one for you he really did he only had one turnover in the game and uh, made six free throws um, had uh, three or four assists you know he is he's done everything that, that we've asked him to do and and I, I, I could not be any more proud of the way that he's played and um, just the way that he's approached his entire career at Hoggard um, you know, his freshman year, he didn't get to play a whole lot on the JV team, but his sophomore year, he ran that team as the point guard. And, you know, I remember uh, an opposing coach uh, saying that uh, they couldn't turn us over and couldn't beat us because Walker wouldn't turn the ball over. And then, you know, last year he did a good job of learning from Trey and, you know, played a little bit with Trey, uh, but in practice every day he was – you know, he was going against Trey, and I think that's really paid off for him this year, and, and he's just had a fantastic year for us. We talked about Jack Bagley earlier in the season. We were talking about how some of those shots that he had late in games were not going down. Obviously, you mentioned a little bit about how they were falling, uh, especially on Friday night, back-to-back -back threes, a one late in the game. It's good to see all that hard work pay off for a good kid like Jack. Absolutely, and, you know, he went through a little stretch where, uh, you know, he was – just a little uh, frustrated and confused because when you put in that much time and effort and you have those opportunities in the games, you want things to go well. But um, it, it just it made him go back in the gym and keep working. And, uh, you know, we watched some film trying to figure out some things that he was uh, maybe not doing that he had been doing earlier and noticed a couple of things. And, uh, you know, he's really shooting the ball well right now and playing the way you want a senior to play down the stretch. Back-to-back Mid-Eastern Conference tournament titles. You can't ask for much more than that. Uh, playing some of your best basketball towards the end of a season, uh, that's – coach's goal every year uh, so how does that as you kind of look back obviously with a lot of head for you uh, but to you know go through that string of games uh, you played a West Brunswick team a tough one last year New Hanover uh, this season so to be able to come out on top in those games uh, got to be pretty special for you yeah you know anytime that you're playing for a, a trophy and playing for a championship uh, you want to you want to take advantage of the opportunities you want to be at your best and you know our kids have really bought into uh, you know, playing that way in the postseason. And basketball is a great sport in which you have multiple opportunities to win championships. And, um, you know, we, we talked about the importance of us last week going down there and playing our best 
and you know you have another opportunity to win a win a championship and you know wanted to be able to do that and and you know one of our assistant coaches said before the game <clears throat> you're going to talk about this you're going to remember this game you're going to remember this night for the rest of your life make it something that you want to talk about and uh, I, I think we certainly did that well Jack uh, kind of said it well too after the game I uh, played New Hanover plenty of times during his playing career he said this one was the best one yeah. that he's ever played in uh, with that said Seizing the momentum here, moving into the state playoffs. How do you keep this uh, on a roll here going into the uh, first week of the state tournament? Well, at this point, you have to keep it going or you're not going to get to practice and play again. So, uh, you know, with a bunch of seniors, you hope that uh, those guys understand that sense of urgency. And our underclassmen have practiced really well all year long. And, uh, you know, we got a home game in the first round. And uh, that's what your focus has to be on is making sure that, that you practice well and prepare uh, for somebody that you haven't seen and hasn't seen you and uh, you know it just comes down to being able to execute your stuff better than they do and uh, you know so hopefully we'll have a have a good effort in that first round and you know then you go from there but you can't get can't get uh, caught looking ahead or you'll you'll never make it to that point we got to focus on you know obviously you can't do it any other way but you've got to make sure your focus is on that next game. Hoggard Boys basketball coach Brett Queen here with us on Sports Roundtable. Coach, I have a, uh, thanks again for stopping by all season, and congratulations on a great win uh, back on Friday to claim the back-to-back uh, -back Mid Eastern Conference titles. Thank you. The Hoggard Vikings will play a first-round home game. Should they win that, they may head on over to Brogdon Hall for a date with New Hanover again. We'll see how that all pans out this week as we open the uh, 4A North Carolina High School Athletic Association uh, State Tournament. We'll catch up with the high school basketball coaches from across New Hanover County should they advance through the first couple of rounds of the state playoffs this week. Thanks again for everyone uh, for stopping by here on the show. Our latest edition of Sports Roundtable, I'm Joe Katz. Check out PortCityDaily.com. You get your score stats and highlights each and every day, particularly this week with the high school state playoffs going on. We'll take our final uh, break, and then we'll do it and until next time.